Welcome back to another video today, YouTube. And for today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to take minimalistic photos for Instagram. Before we get this video started, if you are new to this channel, my name is Kisswood. I make videos on photography. If you could, I would really appreciate it if you press that subscribe button, turn on the bell so you can get the notifications when I post a new video, and to make sure that you leave a like and a comment on this video. So now with social media being more popular than ever, everyone is really kind of looking to establish their own style, their own type of vision, their own type of look. And for a lot of people, they tend to strive towards doing minimalistic like photos. I think the biggest thing when it comes to minimalistic photos is that a lot of people don't necessarily understand what minimalism is, how do they go about taking these photos if they haven't before, and just trying to understand where to start. Minimalism is literally everywhere nowadays. You see it in architecture, fashion lookbooks, different magazines. You literally see minimalism everywhere. So I'm just gonna be giving you guys just a few tips on what I think can help you take better minimalistic type photos. The first thing when taking minimalistic photos is understanding what minimalism is. And I feel like a lot of people don't really start there and they just try to replicate something that they've seen online. Minimalism generally refers to a style or approach that uses a small number of elements. And when you look at the definition, it kind of makes sense when you compare it to minimalistic photos. The whole idea behind this is just not having too many elements in your photo so your subject can look directly at the point you are trying to get across. And so understanding what that means is a good place to start because you don't want to have too many elements i don't want to be looking left and right at and trying to understand what exactly are you trying to show me here my second tip would be the pop out effect and essentially what i mean by that is just to make sure that your audience understands exactly what you are trying to make pop out so with these types of photos it can be kind of both easy and difficult to get your message across. Sometimes if it's for something like architecture or even just a general photo, you can see exactly what the subject is, exactly what you want people to look at. But sometimes when it's just more so your living room that has a minimal like feel, it can be kind of tough to get people to focus on one thing unless you want them to focus on multiple things. Just make sure that there aren't too many elements in that photo. So that way it's just a little bit more pleasing to the eye and just a little bit easier to follow when you're looking at those types of photos. So essentially with the pop out effect, just make sure that you don't overcomplicate things. Just be simple but also be unique and creative. The next tip I have are colors are very, 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 very important. When it comes to taking these types of photos, it's not too often you're gonna see a lot of very, very flashy, you know, bunch of blues, oranges. It, 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 those colors can be very distracting to the eye. The only time you're gonna see those in minimal like photos are when they're the primary subject or the primary element that people want you to look at. And so usually with this, you try to have everything around it be a very similar color, a very, very comforting type of style. And then you maybe will have something like a bright green plant or something just that, that, that just really, really pops out. So that way they, the person can focus directly on what you want them to see. It may not always be like this, but usually minimal light photos don't have too much color in them because you know, the whole point is for it to be, you know, very, very, very few elements so that you can really focus on what you're trying to get your person to look at. So colors are very important. So that's why people tend to stick to a bunch of whites, beiges, uh, different, just a bunch of different pastel like colors. That way it can be a little bit more pleasing, a little bit more calm, a little bit easier to follow and to understand the primary purpose of this image. The next tip I have is that less is more. And so you can take this from a few different directions. You can take it from the direction of, you know, less things in your photos, the less distracting it can be. That way you can have it be very appealing and, you know, very easy to focus. Or, you know, it could even be something like, you know, taking a picture of like a building. You don't want to take a picture of the entire building if there's just so much going on, a bunch of signs, a bunch of windows, a bunch of different stairs. It just can be a lot. It can be a very, very, very confusing thing. 
but maybe if you can just take a picture of the top of that building and you kind of crop out the bottom, you know, let more of the sky expose. That way you're allowing a lot more negative space, which helps the person really target exactly what they want you to look at, which is the buildings. Whereas if I were to take a picture of the entire building and you could see the stairs and the signs and a bunch of different things, you really don't know exactly where to look at. So sometimes less is more. And speaking on negative space, that brings me into my final tip. This is a huge emphasis on the background and really what's surrounding your main element or elements. You know, you really want to you really want to use that negative space, allowing there to be just a, just a bunch of emptiness or just a good amount of emptiness around your subject or your elements. That way it can be easier to follow the photos and it can be a lot more appealing to the eye. This can definitely be very tough. You know, I'm not the best minimalistic photo taker myself, which is why in this video you've seen a bunch of different examples examples from other photographers that I've used but it is something that you know you get better as you practice and essentially this can really help with you just building your own sense of personal style with your photo taking and just kind of helping you understand exactly what message or point you're trying to get across when you are taking these photos. I really wanted to keep this video pretty short, concise, and, and just straight to the point so that you guys can have these tips that will help you take better minimalistic photos. I really hope that this video helped and if it did, it would mean a lot to me if you can press that thumbs up button. Just leaving this video a like really does a lot and to make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that I can make more videos like this. If you have any other ideas or things that you want me to make videos on, please feel free to leave a comment down below and to let me know. But I really appreciate all the support that I've been getting from you all and I couldn't be any more grateful as I am trying to be more consistent with being on YouTube. And with that being said. I really appreciate y'all for tuning into this video and until the next one, peace. Hard to find a place, peace of mind is hard to find when you got deadlines on your mind. Well, tell me I'm right, but tell me I'm wrong. At the end of the day, it's gonna still be the same song. Lost in my thoughts again. I'm lost in my thoughts again. Lost in my.